Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this session on cybersecurity, the intersection uh, between cybersecurity and accessibility. Thank you for the organization to bring this session to this and this topic to this Congress today. And thank you to the panelists that will be sharing these 40 minutes with me today on this topic. We've got uh, Jessica Rivero. She comes from Fundación Once. She's an accessibility expert with more than 12 years of experience in the field. We also have Isabel Lopez from Samsung, an expert in cybersecurity, responsible for cybersecurity professional services. And Miguel Zarraluki from Veritas, who is online. I hope he is connected. He's a specialized, he's marketing manager, specialized in biometrics, authentication products. Miguel? Okay, to start the session, we would like to show you a video. So please send a video. Right, so we need to tell you that this is a video that is 10 years old and is still very valid. It represents the consequences in terms of privacy and confidentiality, the, um, the consequences of being active in the digital era, in the digital world, and not taking into account the correct protection measures. So that's the topic that we bring today. Here we are gonna discuss whether these risks are greater for people with disabilities and whether these deploying cybersecurity measures to protect us all, whether deployment, the deployment of these cybersecurity measures pose extra barriers for people with disabilities. A year ago, we had, we put these two words together in a session similar to this in a different Congress, accessibility and cybersecurity. Um, many uh, con uh, conclusions arise, and those are the ones that we are gonna um, discuss here today. So we are gonna start with, start with Jessica uh, Rivero. One of the conclusions were that people with disabilities are intense users of digital technologies, could be mobile applications, IoT gadgets, um, many assistive technologies, 
and um, those technologies collect and process data of these people in the cloud, and many privacy and confidentiality issues arise. What are those issues, and, um, and tell us a little bit about those. Well, thank you, Almudena, for the presentation, and thank you also to Zero Project to give us the opportunity to be here and share with you the, the problems and, and the, the, the accessibility barriers that could have the cybersecurity. So with respect to your questions, um, the, the people with disability use the, the technology in a massive way. They use the technology in their daily tasks, uh, in, in all the, the tasks that they do, do uh, in the day. And I want to give you three examples, three situations in which they use this technology and could suppose a, a problem in the security. The first one, imagine that you are at home and you want to drink a beverage and then you go to the, to the kitchen, open the fridge, and then you want to select a, a, a beverage. Well, if you are, a, you are blind, then you, you, you need to know what kind of beverage do, do you have in front of you. You have to, to select one. So you can take your phone, uh, focus the, the beverage, and then process the image that you are uh, focusing and say, know what kind of beverage do you have in front of you. How is, is this done? Well, this, is, this image is sending to the cloud. The cloud is processing this information and then is giving to you the, the text code or uh, the, the thing that you have in front of you. But well, where is that information? What, what are doing the company processing that information doing what with that, that with that information uh, and of course you are sharing your information your personal information of your home in the cloud another example is about subtitles uh, if you are deaf it's possible that you need to use subtitles when you are going you are going to to the doctor to an appointment to the doctor uh, well, to, to to solve some medical uh, problem or for example when you are in a meeting with uh, with partners you need to use subtitles to follow the meeting, to, to take part in the meeting, or with friends. You are in a, in a dinner, and you want to talk with your friends and also listen what they are saying. So you, are, you need to use some kind of technology to obtain the subtitles. How is this doing? Well, you have your computer, you have your mobile phone, and then you are recording the voice, sending the voice to the, to the cloud, processing the voice, and obtaining the text to be shown in the subtitles. But of course, as in the previous case, where are those information stored? What are doing the companies with the, your data? How they are doing? And the last one is about the, the location. Uh, you are going, uh, walking uh, through the street, and then uh, you need a guide if you are blind, for example, to know how to reach a point in the, in, the, in the city from the point in which you are. So you can use the, the guiding application, Google or whatever, to know how to follow, how to, to reach your destination. And then the, the mobile phone is collecting data, is tracking your information in the city, and they are obtaining information of, of your daily habits or your daily uh, path that you follow. And not only that, imagine that you need to know the state of the traffic light. You can connect to a smart traffic light with your Bluetooth. So you are sharing your device Mac with the, with the service, with the company that are giving you this service. So you are sharing also the information. So we have two problems with this for persons with disability. First, what are doing the companies with your information that they are processing? And also, where is that information that I'm sharing of my home, of my disability, of my medical information, of, of whatever? Thank you. Uh, I, I give you another question related to this, and is that um, when applying cybersecurity measures, you've told us uh, in previous sessions that you increase barriers for people with disabilities. So can you just tell us a little bit about that? Yes, certainly. Uh, when you have a disability, the uh, cybersecurity is another barrier that is uh, added to the, to the interaction with the technology. And one also, I think that it's better to show you with examples. For example, the double authentication factor is something that we do every day, um, that you want to enter to your email, and then you put your password, and then you receive as SMEs with the code that you have to enter in another page. It's a very complex pr process. Imagine that you are a person with intellectual disability, and you have to follow this process. It's a barrier for, for them, but it's not the only one. In the same case, I'm a 
a person with intellectual disability, and then I have to remember a password, a very long and robust password with a strange characters, without any kind of logic, and it's not the only problem. It has to be different in every place in which I have to introduce the, the password because it has to be different because security reasons. So I have to remember a lot of password, a very complex password, and it's not the only case. Uh, I want to give you another sample. I, I have to access to, to my office, and then I have to use the fingerprint to, to enter there, or for example, to unlock the, the mobile phone. But, well, but I could, couldn't have hands, for example, so can I open my or unblock my, my mobile phone? And for example, if I'm blind and I want to open a session in, in a service and then appear a, a CAPTCHA. So I have to choose the correct image that, for example, in which appear um, a car, but I cannot see the image, so I cannot access to the information that I want because I have a disability. Thank you. Isabel, as representing the manufacturers, representing Samsung, is all our responsibility as users to take care of cybersecurity, or um, what does Samsung bring to the table in terms of privacy and, and confidentiality that can help us? Thank you, Amudena. Uh, before answering your question, I would like to thank you for, for the invitation and also thank you for, for this initiative the project, the zero project. Um, the world has changed in a short amount of time. And this new way of working, time zones, offices, location, have lost all meaning. In the morning, we were working from the hotel in the very early morning. And change also means new types of risks, virus, errors, leaks, and danger that we haven't seen before. For last year, we were uh, working in front of ransomware, phishing, many, many different attacks. The question here is, is your phone fully protected? And the answer is no. At least, it, it comes with Samsung Knox. Your memories, your conversation, your financials. Do you think your password to unblock your phone is enough to protect your information or your data? And what protect your password or your fingerprint that usually we use to unblock the phone? Noxbolt from Samsung Noxbolt is the answer of your, of your question. It is a solution inside your phone at the chip level, hardware-based protection for your password and for biometric data. Besides, Samsung devices include the Note platform. It protects all the phone, not just a, a memory or the data in your in, in a isolated memory, but it protects your, all your phone when turning on, when turning off, and also in the real-time protection of the system. Designed to protect and prevent any software system modification. But this is not enough uh, to protect all your phone or to protect all your communication. We, at Samsung, we partner with the world's leading tech companies, working together to, to offer better protect you together. I think this is the, the key point. Thank you. We had a, a speaker. I'm happy to see you, Miguel. From Veritas, I gave a brief introduction. No. Um, specialized in biometrics authentication products. And, um, and I wanted to ask you um, how you incorporate accessibility into your technolo in technology designs. And, um, and also, because I'm going to just give you two questions at the same time, because we are running a bit of short of time. So how do you take human diversity into account in the biometric world? So two questions Thanks. for you. <laughs> Thanks, Almudena. Thanks a lot for, for the presentation. Uh, just briefly, wanted to say thank you uh, to the organization, to La Once Group, to, to you, Almudena, Jessica, Isabel, for sharing this time. Uh, I feel enormous responsibility to speak about these kind of issues uh, to people that actually suffer a lot, this lack of sensitivity. 
uh, and, uh, and it's very special for me to talk about accessibility when, from the perspective of Veridas, which, as Almudena says, is a company which uh, dedicates their efforts to create software for identity verification based on biometrics, because uh, our vision of the world is a vision without barriers, barriers in terms, as Jessica says, said, in terms of passwords, in terms of OTP codes, in terms of CAPTCHA tests, uh, we envision a world that people are recognized uh, both in the digital and physical world for what they truly are, right? Uh, in this sense, and now answering to your, to your question, Almudena, uh, for me it's important to highlight four things. First, that our solutions are based on 100% proprietary technology. Uh, why I tell you this? Because that means that we can easily adapt to the, any requirements in terms of accessibility. Uh, because we are the, the owners of our technology, the owners of, of our solutions, and this is a key differentiator in the market, right? Uh, secondly, we have a, a specific team of UX UI uh, dedicated to this task that works very coordinated with both the go-to-market teams, mostly marketing and the technology team, that, that makes uh, easy to incorporate all the user experience and accessibility needs into our designs, uh, from the very beginning, right? Third thing is that uh, as we verify our identities, we first validate an ID document and then we take a selfie and we compare them. So all the technology that is created to capture that document and to take that selfie uh, is being built in a way that is 100% configurable. So you can choose any text, any size of the text, any fonts, any colors, uh, even you can set up some audio aids so you can help the, the, the boy or the girl in the other side of the screen do the process in a, in a smoother way. And, and, and again, that makes our, our customers easy to adapt our solutions to whatever their needs are, right? And finally, and in, this was the, for, for, is for the first question, uh, we are also incorporating some very good partners in our way. Uh, for example, one of them is, is Illunion, which is a, is a company of part of the OSE group, that is uh, Jessica Almudena's company. And they are helping us a lot incorporating this accessibility mentality from the very beginning, right? From the very initial design. So accessibility no longer becomes a patch or an amendment at the end, but it's part of the design. Uh, we are doing so by creating some focus groups, some test groups with people with disabilities, physical, the intellectual, or, or whatever. So uh, we can create products from the very beginning, taking into account this, these issues, right? And regarding your second question was more about human diversity. Uh, and very quickly, uh, is, for me, it's important to explain how this works, right? This is being built on artificial intelligence algorithms which is a completely different technology that was been used in the past. Uh, in the past, the technology was based on landmarks, which means uh, the technology was measuring the distance between different points of your face, was measuring distance between the eyes, the nose, the mouth, and that way of working caused a lot of problems for, yeah, in the cases of that was not that easy to, 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 to measure, right? Imagine uh, people wearing dark glasses, uh, yeah, people with not, uh, right postures or whatever, right? So with the upcoming of artificial intelligence that was solved uh, and eye-driving technologies allow recognized people regardless of the position, the condition, the lights, uh, the age different. If people is wearing glasses or has face masks, doesn't matter. If people have, are blind because they don't have the eyes or the pupils or not I'm right next postures, it's okay, right? It's, it's not based on, on measurement, it's based on, on other things, right? Uh, that could be the answer. Thank you very much. Accessibility by design, very good concept. So, um, um, Isabel, going back to you, how do you incorporate accessibility in your technology designs, also in Samsung? Yeah. In, terms, in terms of accessibility and cyber security, I would like to talk about uh, Samsung Message Guard, that is, a, is available in our latest flagship, S23. Um, a single image could could be adding a malicious code. 
zero clicks exploits are the latest kind of cyber attack. Your phone received an image, you didn't touch your phone, but someone may already be reading your message, uh, browsing your gallery, and copying your bank details. We are in an era of increasing cybercrime targeting user data. One in three consumers around the world has been the victim for a data branch where their personal data was hacked. Samsung Message Guard automatically neutralized any potential threat hidden in image files before they have a chance to do anything in your, any arm in your phone or with your information. It also runs silently and invisible in the background and doesn't need to be activated by the, by the user. There are many accessibility options that user could activate, could, could configure using Bixby, the button in the device and talk to, to your device, I mean talking to your device, or searching for accessibility work from the menu. Changing the settings that best meet your needs. One of the most common option is the talk back, especially, especially accessibility setting that will narrate everything on your display. The apps in your home, buttons, everything. Um, Tollback is a great feature, especially it's very helpful for anyone that is visually, visually impaired. There are more, many more options like high contrast, contrast them by different colors, high contrast phone, buttons, so it's just a, a way to configure and find your needs. Thank you. Um, just to finish a few um, seconds or a minute, if you could share with us, Miguel, a real case scenario in which people with disabilities could authenticate via biometrics with no problem or uh, with no extra um, cybersecurity uh, barrier. Yeah, Samuel and I uh, try to, keep, to make it in one minute. Uh, so in, in this case, it was a case deployed in, in Mexico uh, for pensioners. Uh, in this case, VDA, which is the largest Mexican bank, uh, wanted to, uh, uh, to because they have an issue with, with pensioners that they need to go physically to the bank branch to provide proof of life. If they wanted to put in pension. You can imagine that was a mistake in terms of user experience, but also in terms of well-being, because people traveling long hours to be able to go to a bank branch. Uh, we are speaking in the middle of a pandemic. We, that was a high risk. We needed to find a solution to do that. And for the first time in the history of Mexico, we we are able to deploy a voice biometric solution that uh, allows citizens to provide proof of life remotely from their homes, independently of the language spoken, independently of the text, and only in just three seconds. That means that senior citizens in Mexico now can just call a phone number and from their homes. They can say whatever they want and they, they can be authenticated easily and provide proof of life. And it's the first time in the history of Mexico that uh, an official, let's say, procedure is being uh, deployed in pre-Columbian language, because it, it's, it doesn't matter what language you speak, right? Uh, this technology is super powerful, but as I said, right? Depending on the, independently on the language and text, people can be authenticated. And now we are counting more than 150,000 people already registered and provided proof of life every month uh, in a remote way, right? That is, that's a huge step in terms of uh, closing the digital uh, divide for elderly and we are good staple in terms of accessibility here. Thank you. Well, it's one o'clock. We better stick to the timetable. Thank you very much. I think after this second session, a few more conclusions can be driven. And um, I would wrap up the, the panel saying that accessibility by design in cybersecurity technologies, that uh, yeah, we should not bring down security defenses uh, just because of our disability, but we should talk, participate, 
and let the manufacturers know about our special needs uh, so they bring those uh, levels of protection to all of us, not leaving anyone behind. So thank you very much to our panelists.